Today, I would like to focus my demonstration on the new tool that we have just released before the ACR meeting, at the ACR meeting, actually a few weeks ago. It's our uh, new uh, cohort builder. So you can see on the banner that uh, it's still a beta version. We, we are aware of a few bugs that we need to, still need to fix. And uh, we will also want to uh, implement new, some new announcements based on user feedback that we received so far. So uh, all this together, we, we will wait uh, maybe a, a month or two before uh, actually naming this tool uh, with uh, version one. So uh, the, the, the code builder is made of uh, three sections, essentially. The first one at the top is the filter section. The, in the middle, you have the query section. And then at the bottom, you have the results section. So the results section offers a, a summary view, the one that you currently see on my screen, and a table view that I show you in a, in a few minutes. So uh, when no filters is selected, uh, you see by default the entire uh, kit switch cohort. So you can see here that we have almost 80, more than 8,300 uh, participants with 30, more than 34,000 data files for, for each of them. For them. Uh, here below you have a table, a breakdown of the number of data files per data types and experimental strategy. You have other breakdowns as well. Uh, uh, for example, the number of participants per studies, per study, the number of participants per, per uh, demographic characteristics, uh, such as gender, ethnicity, uh, race, and family composition. Breakdown of the uh, by age of diagnosis. And area, for example, the most uh, part are uh, representing the most frequent diagnosis within your cohort. And at the bottom, you have an overall survival plot for the patient, the participant for which we have actually uh, uh, applicable uh, survival data. So, uh, <clears throat> so let's start and do some query. So to help user to find uh, what they're looking for, we group all the filters into uh, a few uh, number of uh, a small number of uh, interested categories like demographic, clinical. And uh, quick filters are the ones that uh, uh, we think would be the most commonly used by the, the researchers. So for example, studies. Uh, you can see uh, all the studies that we have now in uh, uh, kids first. So uh, you have on the right side the count of the number of participants per study for each of them. And uh, this, these counts are automatically refreshed as you add terms into uh, your query. So let's select the first one, control the arts defect. And you select and you apply. And then you can see this term has been added in the query section. Uh, and then you can mouse over to see uh, the complete uh, term. Uh, now let's say I'm interested to do a trio analysis. So I, I will do, uh, I would go to clinical, select on participant that belongs, that would belong to a, a trio. So uh, I go to family composition and select trio only, and then add an error. So you can see that the summary uh, panel at the bottom uh, is uh, as refresh, is refreshing as you add terms. So now we have 888 participants who, who meet uh, these uh, criteria. So let's say I want to uh, 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 do some variant analysis. So I want to make sure that all the family members have uh, uh, variant counts, for example. So I can go here and select the family share available data types. And I can select for example GBCF. If I'm interested in more specific diagnosis for this for this participant, I can search for a diagnosis here. So this is a text box. It's a very convenient way to, for searching uh, uh, filters. So I can type diagnosis, for example. I get, I get the field diagnosis, open it, and then I can select, for example, uh, uh, ventric ventricular defect. You can search. Oh, sorry. And let's say I, I'm, say I want this diagnosis, ventricular septal defect first. I select it and I apply it. And then at the end, uh, I have a nine participants who, who met this criteria. I can modify a query directly from it. So for example, I'm interested to all the ventricular defects. So I can defect, I can uh, click them, ventricular 
Uh, and I, I can select one or more uh, other defect, ventricular defect. I can select all and then apply the filter. And then again, I get new results. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, let, let me, so you can see first here that uh, there's no uh, serval plot. We don't have serval data for any of these uh, 13 participants. So let me show you a, a, another query. So we can start a new query here. And this is a quite unique feature for, uh, for the kit search course builder. So you can actually uh, run multiple queries into a single session and combine them. So let me do, let me show you an example. Let's say I'm interested in brain cancer. So I can type brain, um, find the study, the study, apply it. And I want, uh, then you can see we, we do have now a, 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 a serval plot for these uh, 953 participants. And if I want to be more specific, that's why I'm looking for a dental medulloblastoma. I can apply this new filter, and then I get yet another uh, serval plot for these. Okay, let me start, uh, let's say I'm interested in uh, outcomes, so I can start a new query again. Outcome, I do have a field called is outcome disease related? Okay, click, I can say yes, click select the yes value, so which means that the, the, the disease is related to the, the outcome for this patient. I can apply it. Then I get uh, 162 participants. And now I can combine. So let's say I want query two and query three. So I can select both and apply the end operator between them. And then you see this is a very easy way to combine queries that you have uh, previously built. So you see that now the queries are colored to help user to, to identify them. And uh, you do have, uh, 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 well, it's actually executing this query and then you have new, new, uh, new summary, new result. You can always click back to a previous query to re-execute them and see again the results. So you can navigate across your queries and you, you, you can see the change in the, the result. If you actually the modify the query that's the query two. Well, obviously, it will affect the result of query three because uh, of query four, the fourth queries because uh, you see two and three. So let's do it. You can uh, remove one term, and you can see that actually this query has a chance. You can even delete the query, a dependent query. You get a message: dependent queries will be deleted. Are you sure you want to delete? And you delete. And then you see that the query tree now has only the term, the involves only the, the second query. So let, let me uh, show you another way to combine uh, uh, queries. So I'll do, I'll start. Uh, let's say I want a, a, a target data. So I can search for a target study. Let's see this one. And now I'm interested uh, uh, at the age of diagnosis. So let's go. Uh, let's let's go there. Age at diagnosis. So this is another kind of uh, uh, facet. So you can select a range of values. So uh, let's say I'm interested between uh, zero and uh, five years old. And you can see now the, the this bar chart uh, shows only participant with the. Uh, newborns and one to five years old. Now, you can duplicate a query. So if you want to modify it very slightly, so it's a faster way to, to build a new query. So you duplicate the last query. And then you, you can change the, the range, for example, directly from here. So you can, for example, uh, five to 10, 10 years. Okay, you apply. And now you can see that the bar chart is uh, <laughs> in, include only one column. And now you can do an or, so you can select both. You do an or. And then you see now that, uh, as expected, you have more bar, the newborn, until 10 years old. 
So this is the way you, you, you can work with this uh, new tool. So again, the unique feature is, uh, is the ability to uh, actually do multiple queries, combine them, and now saving them. So for example, uh, you can uh, save a court. Uh, so once you're happy with this, you can save it. And you, you give a name. So let's say my first cohort. And you can note here that you are in this uh, workspace or the, the first court is now the title of your court is there. You can open the uh, previously saved ones. For example, you can open a new one, my second. This is a study that I had uh, built before. You can open it. And this is the, the study that was saved. OK. Uh, the, the table, so let's go back to the, the, the first one. Okay, so the table view now uh, is basically a, 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 the list of participants of these, uh, for this cohort, uh, for the, the current active queries. And from there, you can uh, download uh, the, all the clinical data for the participants, the clinical data and, uh, for the participants and, and their family members. And you can also download a spreadsheet for the biospecimen data related, associated to these participants. You can uh, select columns, the columns you want to display or not in that table, and you can export this table in CSV or an Excel spreadsheet so that you can work with it uh, with Excel. Uh, now, uh, the next, let's go there. So the next step is to, uh, let's see, I'm going here. I want, want to, to, to see the files that are uh, uh, associated with these participants. So I can click here, and I open, uh, I add the list, I open the, the, the first tool we release, which is the file repository. So I get the, all the files associated with these uh, participants from my court. So I can apply for uh, other filters. Let's say I'm interested only in RNA-seq, for example. And now I get all the RNA-seq for that court. Uh, uh, files for that court. Now, the next step would be for me to push these files to our compute cloud environment, which is Cavatica. But you can see there's a lack uh, here, so I don't have access to these files yet because actually the system doesn't know yet if I have access, I'm allowed to access these files. So for that, I need to connect to the, the repository that owns these, these files. So for that, I go to the setting. And then you can see that uh, actually the kids first uh, integrate uh, the different, uh, integrating different uh, data repository together, which are governed by different uh, data access committees. So you need to connect the good one. So we have two control access uh, data sets, one uh, governed by kids first, and one, uh, and we have the NCI controlled access data. So target data is actually an NCI controlled data access, so I can connect to this using my ERA common account. So I can log in. Uh, yes, I answer the question. And now the Kitsos portal knows that I have access to some of the, the, the NCI control access data sets. And to know which one, I can click here, and I see that I have access to two studies, target uh, acute mediated leukemia and neuroblastoma from target. Now, if I go back to the, the, the file repository, I can see now that I have, don't have a, the locker uh, anymore, but I have two icons. One that uh, uh, in theory allowed me to download the data. So sometimes I'm allowed to download the data directly from the portal. For target data, we, we don't allow that. The only thing we allow is the ability to push to your uh, workspace in Kavatska and for you to start an for the user to start any analysis. So let's say I, I click, I select some of them, about 20, and then I can push to Kevatica these files and start the analysis on them. So I did that. I will select the project, the Kevatica project I want to push my data in. So uh, let's say I want to select this project. I have two projects in Kevatica now, two projects, kids first uh, analysis and my project, and I copy these files uh, to Kavetica, and I have success. So 
now Alison is going to show what we can do on Kavatka once we have pushed uh, these uh, files.